and uh, I had the privilege of being a master's student here. I got my master's, my MBA, and then had the wonderful privilege of being able to teach. And so my dean here was my dean. Yes. <laughs> so it feels kind of like coming back home. But tonight, yeah, one year she was the most outstanding teacher, adjunct of the year. She still is. <laughs> yes. just has, I, I just believe in having fun in the classroom and just really making it relevant to you. So tonight, what I I would do this kind of thing free all the time if I could, and I actually do a great deal of volunteer work in mentoring individuals who are trying to find jobs. And I think God may be leading me to begin a monthly um, mm -hmm. meeting time where I bring people in who are who are trying even maybe a career transition or um, looking for new ideas or thoughts regarding their career or just need encouragement uh, in that career path. So we'll see where God leads, but it's because it is a passion. So tonight we're going to talk about resumes, but as I shared with Kelly, I, I can't just talk about a resume, and I'm limited on, in these 40 minutes, I'm going to be really, it's going to be tough to, to get all the information I'd like to get to you, but um, I think we will encapsulate the key things. So, but I didn't want to leave it out of, as a resume because I want to emphasize to you that the resume is literally only that small piece and the interview is what gets you seen. It has to be much more than what's verbally on that paper. So let's let's go ahead and start by this. Here's some more jobs. Orlando job growth this year may wipe out net losses since 2007. I always like to start with encouragement. So this is encouragement. But I want to ask you, where do you think this came from? Where did this quote come from? And how far back do you think this goes? It came from the Orlando Business Journal. And I shared this with you to say one of the most important things I want you to start doing as you plan your career as search, or, and your search needs to go on for the rest of your life, because you always need to be ready with an exit strategy, is I want you to be reading. I want you to read what's happening in the local market. So this was in the Orlando Business Journal, and it will it means in this year 26,600 more jobs are expected than last year. Now that means a job for you. Come on in. That means a job for you, and that's how I want you to think. So. Let's talk about this slide, because this slide tells us where those jobs will be. That's the other piece of, the, of your resume writing, is you want to be sure that the resume, that what you are looking for in your resume is going to get you the job. So to go into an industry that has jobs that are non-existent isn't wise. So let's talk. Where, do you, where are these jobs up on the top? Health. Healthcare. Okay, and healthcare, what do you think of? Nursing. Okay, nursing, we always hear nursing. Absolutely. But what about other jobs? What other jobs do you think might be in healthcare that are growing? X rays? Very good. Huge need. Guess what? Osceola County Community College, Valencia's College is now pursuing when it comes to a two-year program in healthcare. Has anybody read? Is it radiology? No. Well, radiology is at the West Campus, but Osceola is looking at biomedical engineering oh. two-year program. So, so this healthcare piece right here involves a lot of different jobs and a lot of different areas that you could focus on. Okay, what about the next top one? Technology. Tell me a little bit about technology. I can do with everything from, uh, from computers to um, lasers. Yeah. How about technology manufacturing? 
right now there's an incredible focus on manufacturing all across the United States. And there's a huge focus here in Florida on manufacturing. We have large groups of organizations that are looking at Florida to create the skill sets for their manufacturing jobs. And many of those jobs only require two year programs, a year program. If you're going to move up and go into the leadership side of it, then you're going to want to get your degree, your BA, your master's. Okay, what about this one here? Who can tell me what that job is? Uh, well, it's, that's okay. a welder. It's obvious, right? Welder. Who can tell me what the average salary for a welder is? I know it's it's fifty. It's up there. About sixty. Twenty. Yeah. I'd say over a hundred. It's over a hundred. No way. Over over a hundred thousand. <laughs> and right now there is a manufacturer. Do you know what the recumbent bikes are? Have you ever seen those? Where you're sitting in them, and if you ever ride the Rust Orange Trail, that they have a recumbent bike manufacturer called Catrike out of Winter Garden, and they are international. They're, they have won numerous awards, and when I visited their plant recently, the owner, who is from Brazil, he's an engineering um, guru from Brazil, said, I cannot find good welders. Mm -hmm. And yet the welding is absolutely key to the quality of their product. So, this also represents construction. Construction is, is on, scheduled to increase by 10% in this next year. And this is from 2013 to 2016 that I'm talking about when it's the percentages. But in this year, there will be 26,600 jobs. What about the no vacancy? Hospitality. Hospitality. Who's it? Hi, and your name is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Yes. Hospitality. What does hospitality entail? Hotels, management. Too many times people look at hotels or hospitality and they say, oh, that's all entry level. You're going to be, you know, a housekeeper. You're going to. It's not what I might be interested in. I want you to think, rethink that if you're at all interested in management and if you're at all interested in people and if you have a bent that way because the reality is those jobs are, are growing and they're growing dramatically. And right now, hotels are fighting over staff. Just what the Waldorf Astoria and Bonnet Creek, which is down in Disney, they currently have over 100 openings but they're competing with all the other hotels. And so it's, it's getting very tough for them. So, okay, so then think about this as you consider pursuing your job future. So tonight, today, we're going to start with your history. And your history is your resume. It's, at, it's what you've done, it's your history. Your future is that getting the interview. <coughs> And that getting the interview is critical. And then we'll just finalize with a summary. So let's start with your resume and your history. I'll read this out loud. You may need two, three, even four different resumes to fit your specific job skills. Why did I say that? Because you have to customize each resume for each job, depending on what they're looking for. OK. But What's another reason? That's exactly. They have to be customized. It has to be a skill your past experience. So you're trying to get into a market, and you're going to have to redo your resume every time you need to focus on certain areas. Exactly. But what do you often have to do when you apply for a job? You have to apply online, mm -hmm. right? Even if you have your resume, they will often say, I want you to apply online. And what's going to happen once that resume is online? How are they going to rule you in or out? Keywords. That's exactly right. It's going to be the key words in your resume. And you know, probably 10 years ago, we saw this moving in that direction. 
it is even more powerful now that if you see a job that you really want to have, try and get the job description for that job. For sure have the ad right next to you as you're creating your resume. Because every word that's in that job ad should somehow be in your resume. However you want to include that. Okay, so let's start off with your history and talk about the key components of a good resume. In the old, it, I shouldn't say the old days, the objective was often the, the term that was used years ago when you were writing a resume. It was usually one, two sentences at the most. Now what we're talking about is a profile, an objective. So, because the objective is in there, but it's a profile. So I want you to take a look at your folders and I want you to pull out, you're going to see one with the name William Burton. It's a, it has William Burton. Okay. At the very top, you notice that he has described territory manager. And he, can you all see this? Where he's, where he's got this graph and... And you're going to notice that he's got that under the professional experience. This little piece here, where he talks about his experience as a territory manager, is the specifics of his experience level. So when, he, when you write your profile, you want to be sure to include words that come from your, what you loved in the jobs, in your previous jobs, and then where you want to go. So there's an example of one, but I'm going to read you another one that I just recently got. And this is what he says. Instructional technology profile, instructional technology and communications professional with extensive experience in technology, integration, communications, marketing, media relations, planning, developing, Facilitating and evaluating educational applications and software for K through 12 classrooms seeks a position with an organization or institution where a high degree of motivation, contagious enthusiasm, and strong interpersonal communication communication skills can be utilized. That's very long, isn't it? And in the past, that is not what most people recommended. Now that is. That's a big change that's occurred and the profile is the key piece. And at the end I'll share with you an article that just came out that emphasizes this. Because your recruiter, the individual looking at your resume, is going to take about 30 seconds to review your resume. In the first 15 seconds if they don't see something that makes them want to keep going, you'll be, it'll be set aside. And that, that's the reality. And years, I've spent years being a recruiter and know that that's the truth. And it's because of the magnitude of resumes and applications that are coming in. Now it's online. It's even more cumbersome for them, which is why the key words are how they eliminate you. It makes me very sad because a lot of really good people are being ruled out. So we're going to talk more about how you cannot get ruled out um, as we move along. Okay, so the next one is skills and abilities. And we're going to go in de into detail in these areas. Education, professional experience, accomplishments, volunteer, leadership, professional organizations. When it comes to the professional experience, I'm not going to go into a great detail on that because most people know how to do that. You put your, your title, when you worked, what company it was, a few sentences about what you did in that job, and then bullet points. That's a simple way of doing your professional experience. You want to go back 10 years. You don't need to go back any farther than that. If you have 10 years, it may spill over into a second page. People talk about one page 
resumes. I know as a recruiter, two pages never bothered me because if you have good information on those two pages, then the key is that whatever you tell me at the very top makes me want to keep reading. So I may be very interested in going to that second page. So, but, so we're not going to talk specifically about that, but a lot of times it's the, these other areas that people forget to describe well in their resume. So let's talk about the profile, the objective. I read you one of them, but the key is think of this as a summary of you. It's a summary of the most important things that you want this recruiter to know or this future employer to know. And so that means if you don't want to do, who knows, assembly line work, you don't need to communicate that, that piece there. You're talking about what you really want to do. And obviously you're talking about the things that relate to the job that you're applying for, but you're telling, giving them a summary of how you can fit that. And in that summary, you're going to tell them, they want to know why you're applying for this job. Why is she interested? And, or why is he interested? And even, they may even want to know more after they look at your history. So whatever, you help answer that question for them. Why have they applied for this job? It needs to be very, it needs to be very, it, excuse me, it needs to be very clear, very concise, and as I mentioned, bring specific skills. This individual that I read, and you saw all that described, in an educational environment, that is key information. He just told them at the top of his resume, because that's where this is going to go, at the very top of your resume, not your name. Keep in mind, obviously, your name goes up at the very, very, very top. But this is where it, the important piece. These sample resumes are ones that, that we wanted you to take a look at, and we'll refer to those a little later. But um, it's, it's critical to catch their attention. And you know, the other piece of what this does for you, it refines what you want to do. Okay, skills and abilities. What, how many of you think about putting, have thought about putting your skills and abilities on your resume at the very top? And your name is? Elaine. Elaine? Hi, Elaine. Hi. Nice name. Um, why did you do that? Because you want to show that you, um, where you are capable of doing most of the work that the employer are looking for in like software and, um, you know, from hardware, computer work. That's exactly right. And so, you've just told them what you want to do. That's at the you know, top. And the next thing you want to do is tell them the skill sets you have, your skills and abilities. And those skills and abilities involve not just computer skills, although that's a critical element. And it may be as something as specific as the fact that you're trained on PeopleSoft. And that organization uses PeopleSoft. They may be thrilled, oh my gosh, and that may be the very thing that makes them choose you over someone else. And the other thing is, how about your certifications? How many of you in this room have certifications? What, what do you have, Kelly? I'm certified to be a guidance counselor in K through 12th grade schools. Okay. So, that's a key piece of information right at the very top for them to see. They, they're, they're going to be looking and going, okay, we don't have to think about whether she's certified, she's certified. And we can only hire certified people. How about foreign languages? How many have foreign languages in here? Second language, first language? Is it Spanish? I don't know, because when my parents are Spanish, but in my house is English. Oh, okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> so, you, but you're bilingual? Yes. And see, Huge, huge opportunities that can rule you in and somebody else out. So if you tell them right away, I have it. How about global experiences? Why did I put that up there? Has anybody traveled outside the United States? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Brandy, what did you went to Greece with PBA. You went to Greece with PBA. Good experience? Yeah. You enjoyed it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And just understanding different cultures um, gives you an edge on the market is so diversified today. So exactly. Important. Elaine, what were you going to say? It's similar to her that I've worked in different countries and it's set me to other countries. And um, it shows actually that you have international experience traveling and working with other people outside of your culture. In this element, the global experience is too many of us are pretending like they're not going to make a difference in us being marketable. We think we'll be able to remain in the U.S. and um, have this encapsulized, these opportunities, but you are up against other individuals coming from other countries who are applying for the jobs that you're applying for. And their experience may be something that rules them in versus in you out. So this is this just makes a huge difference. What about this specific machinery? So like forklift. Very good. Yes, forklift training. Uh, and if you're someone who just has a high school uh, degree or graduated from high school or a GED, when you go to apply, maybe you're going to start your career and you want to get a job first, that information on your resume can make all the difference in the world. It may be also specific machinery that you've worked with. It may be that you don't have a, a bachelor's or a master's, but you know how to use CAD, which is that architectural development uh, uh, software. Right now, one of the most powerful software programs is Rivet, which is used in the building and construction industry. And so if somebody had that on their resume, they, they would be looked at right away. Now, what about the job-related expertise? Who can give me an example of something you would just bullet point up there that you would want a supervisor to know? Um, well, the majority of companies uh, focus on customer service and working with different customers. So that would be a, a one that would, an organization too, would be a key. And You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So how would you say something that was more interesting than just customer service? How could you make it stand out? I'm passionate about people. Passionate about people, or you could say you were the number one customer service, oh. one number one customer service rep. Mm -hmm. um, there are all kinds of specifics you could say, but if you can give it a little bit more than just the customer service, that's important. What about if you applied at a technology company and you could share on there, uh, I was the project project manager for transition to new software program. Hmm. Immediately, you have just told them, you are a leader, mm -hmm. you are good with people, mm -hmm. you make things happen, and you did it in just those few words. So think of, think of that when it comes to skills and abilities. Now, the next, when we get to accomplishments, that's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so now we're going to talk about your education. I, I want you to know right away that I left high school on there. Most of you getting your bachelor's and master's degree will not need to put high school on there. But if I was talking with any, any group that, of young people that wanted to move into manufacturing, I would want them, and they're starting their career, I would want them to have high school. And if you would just new in your career, did not have much experience, but in high school you had a lot of leadership, I would want you to say, you know, Boone High School, and just target, you know, you can put your graduation date and just say, um, leader of whatever club you might have been a part of, president of, uh, you name it, maybe you helped raise funds, maybe you recruited volunteers, 
Those are all the kind of things that you could say under that. But obviously college is key. And unless you have, say, 20 years of experience, maybe more, I would put your education right below your skills and abilities. And I, some people do not do that if they have lots of professional experience. They, they want that, I've seen it, and it works for them. They want that educational piece down here because they want the company to focus on the fact that they've gained the experience in this particular area and their education may not have been in that area. It may have been a bachelor's in political science and they're now in something else. So sometimes that's why people will put it below. Most of you, I would encourage you to have it right above, especially because you're just getting your bachelor's degrees. You're just, I don't know who all is getting a master's and who all is getting a bachelor's, but you're just getting it. So they know you're current. You're he hearing the most innovative information about the areas that you're studying. What about a apprentice training? Has anybody ever gone through that? Recently, CNN had a speak uh, at an interview with an individual who said the United States is very lacking in providing apprenticeship apprentice programs in the other countries around the world that's not the case so I think this may be an area that you're going to see growing there will be opportunities for, for apprenticeships Brandy you're what you're going to have to do in counseling is almost that same idea so it's going to be critical for you when you go to get that official position down the road, because Brandy's going into counseling, um, that you let them know where you did your, your, yes, your internship. On the job training, that's anything related to software, you name it. Anything like that. Special workshops. I would only do special workshops if it's something that's a very unusual certification that fits into almost a certification scenario. Come on in. And those special workshops might be that you, how many of you are familiar with crucial conversations? Have you ever heard of that? It's a, you have to become certified to be able to teach it. And so, special workshops means that you're trained as a crucial conversations master trainer. And, and so if they, if anyone was applying for a consulting position with a company that does training, that would be key. Seminars, yes, once in a while. Military training, absolutely. Right now, there are so many government grants. If you know anyone in the military, there are so many government grants that are out there to help our military get jobs. And so, what they have done is going to be critical as they describe their educational background. Self-study and high school, as I mentioned before. Okay, this is the one where it's going to take you time to think about this. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through the fact that, number one, I want you to brainstorm. I want you to talk to friends. I don't want you to be afraid to brag, and I want you to be specific. But let's go back to that talking to friends. Who, is there anyone here in the room who had an experience where they were going to create their resume or apply for a job, and you said to yourself, oh my gosh, you know, I can't apply for that. I don't have that experience. Have you ever done that and said, sat with a friend and go, I don't know exactly where to start? Okay, who, who can give me an example of a time when you felt frustrated trying to write down your accomplishments for a resume? Kind of, no? Okay, well this is what I, I want to encourage you to do. Before you create your resume, I want you to sit down with a friend, a family member, a coworker, maybe not in your current position, company, but a coworker, and let, let them help you walk through what you have done in the past. Many of you may be able to do that very easily. 
lots of times there are things that you will miss that they will remind you of. Whenever I've applied for a new position and I've had to create a resume, I do it every single time. I sit and say, okay, this is what I think I did in this job. Can you think of anything else that I may have missed? And almost always, someone else will see something that you kind of discount. You, you discount it because we don't typically brag about ourselves. We don't typically think about how wonderful we are. And so we need help with that. <coughs> and this is the time that you do get to brag. So being specific. Who can give me an example of a specific, a, a way to communicate specific on an accomplishment? Well, um, I designed and created a training module for Nemours Children's Clinic. I was their first customer service training coordinator and everybody in that clinic, surgeons, physicians, nurses, administrators have to go to that class. So it's something that I'm proud of because that was first. Exactly. <laughs> so that's something I'm very proud of. So I, I put that in my resume. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is something that really causes you to stand out. Other people were involved in using it. What about on a number side? What if you were a uh, business manager of an outpatient clinic? wanted to move on to a new either clinic or a hospital and you were going to have a profit center. Talk about you have to talk about how you um, either exceeded goals or retention, mm -hmm. patient retention, um, minimizing risk management costs and all those things, you know, with um, lawsuits and things like that. You have to really get specific with the numbers, though, to prove all of that. You have to be extremely specific. And so one of the things I don't get to talk to you about tonight, but I'd love to talk with you about it at some point, is creating a career portfolio. Mm. And in your career portfolio, you will be saving that kind of information, what you accomplished. And I'll give you an example of a very specific that I put on my resume. Um, after I had been in healthcare administration, and I, at some day I may get to share my background, but just suffice to say that I started in human resources and had been in management, healthcare administration, and numerous. Do you want to come in? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wrote is that I had responsibility at one point I grew to, got promoted to become the long-term care administrator of a nursing home that was in the red. It was $260,000 in the red. And so, and they were using sixty dollars to $80,000 a month of temporary agency labor. <coughs> That was actually just killing the facility for a whole number of reasons, from the fact that when you have a temporary person in a facility over a long period of time, it's very hard for the residents to gain trust and get comfortable. And so, in my resume I wrote that I eliminated the temporary agency uh, expense and brought that facility to profitability. And I did that at the same time that I raised the salaries of the employees, increased their benefits, and increased their vacation time. So when you do that, a company says, when they see that as your accomplishment, they go, wow. Now, do I go around telling people I did that? No, I don't even like to talk about myself that way. <laughs> but on a resume, yes, I do. And that is something I was very, excited about. And that was just a few of the accomplishments during that time. I have many, many fond memories. So what I would like you guys to do is think right now, and I just want you to take a minute, and this may be hard work, it may be very easy for some of you. I want you to write one accomplishment 
that you would be very proud to put on your resume. Very proud. And think of it either as an accomplishment specific to the job that you want or just an accomplishment. I'm not going to require that it be the future job that you want. In a minute, it feels like a long, long time when you're... Remember as you're writing, think of dates, time frames, dollars, awards, recognition. Okay, we have about 10 more seconds. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ask for a volunteer if one of you would go ahead and share what you came up with then. Well, um, this is something I didn't even realize it until it happened. But I was the first one of my generation to actually obtain my associate's degree in my family. That's huge. Mm -hmm. so. That is huge. The, the stories are wonderful about that. Mm -hmm. I was the first one in my family to get a bachelor's degree, and so there's a lot behind that. Yes, the other band. <clears throat> yeah, the other band. I was the first one in my family to graduate from high school, actually. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just finishing up my master's. Okay, who who else has one they would be willing to share? Um, is Kathy there? Yeah, it's in a startup company. Um, um, I implemented a new sales training um, um, for the for a position, and I received employee of the year. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's a beautiful one, isn't it? <laughs> That's great. Very exciting. Yes, that's what you get to put on your resume. <laughs> yes, Ben. I also managed to save one company I worked for. This is when I was really, I mean, I was young. I was probably about 20, 25, 26. I managed to save the department I was working for $20,000 a year. That's those kind of things are very key, saving a company money. So 20000 a year is a whole lot. You may have had a new idea that saved the company a lot of money. Brandy, did you have an idea you wanted to share? Yeah, well, this is where I struggle because I don't know where if this should go under like education or under accomplishments, but I was outstanding graduate for my bachelor's program. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that, like I usually put it under I would put it under accomplishments for okay. sure. If, uh, definitely, because it, you're you're pulling out the fact that you literally were recognized mm -hmm. in your in an unusual way in your educational background. So that's where I would put it. And say, tell me again, you were the outstanding graduate for like the ministry department for undergrad PBA main campus. So that's great. Yeah. Yes. I never know where to put that. <laughs> that's great. Do you do you know that? I'm, and you guys may have seen my bio. It was very difficult for me, and my bio was created by someone else because I work for Valencia College. I'm a performance consultant for Valencia College right now, and they said, Elena, we have to create a bio for you, and so I had to go get my picture taken. And they took it from my resume. Well, I have on there that I was PBA Rookie Faculty of the Year and, and then Faculty of the Year. That was really hard for me to put down, but it meant so much to me and is key when it comes to some of the work that I do. And, and when we send my bio out, it becomes an important element. So, yes. Okay, any other questions about being specific? So do you guys, can I just get a, a sense, is it hard to do this part? 
is it hard to sit down and write those accomplishments? How many of you have a, can honestly say this is one of the hard things? Will you raise your hand? That's what I, when I ask that question, almost every, this is exactly what I get in a class. And that's why I say it's really good if you can sit with family members and friends and colleagues because they will help rally you and they will go, they're your cheerleader when you can't be. Okay, now, volunteer and professionalism. These are also two areas that now organizations are really looking at. And they can tell a huge story about who you are. So when it comes to the volunteer side, it's outline your key volunteer activities. I mean, do you go and build Habitat for Humanity uh, houses? Or do you, uh, do you volunteer for a homeless shelter? What do you do that says to an organization that you give back and you're not just self-centered? Because that's what they're looking at now. Is this person all about themselves, or are they actually thinking about the community? And then, when you do that, plug in those leadership positions. Because many times in your volunteer organizations, you've had leadership positions that you couldn't get in your job. You didn't get to do, because you weren't in charge. But if you were in charge of coordinating a huge event for a volunteer organization, or if you raised funds, or if you recruited volunteers, they, they are looking and they're going, okay, this, this, this tells me a whole lot about the interpersonal skills, this tells me about the resourcefulness, this tells me about the, the really, the fact that this person may have a level of enthusiasm and energy that we're gonna love. And when it comes to the prof professional organizations, this tells them that you're you are wanting to continue to grow yourself as a professional. And how many of you belong to a professional organization right now associated with a job that either you've had or you're going to have? Kathy? Um, the Orlando Regional um, Brokers Association. Okay. And the MLS Listing Association. Okay, and what? what why is that important to you? Um, well, I have a lot of money to belong to. <laughs> it's true, many of them are. It can be very expensive. It's very expensive, yes. Um, but it shows that I am part of a professional organization um, that is held to a standard in the real estate business. Automatically, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing that happens when you think about a realtor? There are many people that automatically say, like a contractor, can't trust them, mm -hmm. might scam me, etc. Whereas if you're part of a professional organization, they have a totally different feeling about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then also, you may be someone who has presented at these conferences or written papers, been published in these professional organizations. There are lots of positions, especially in education, where individuals will not be considered for positions if they do not, if they're not a part of a professional organization and can show that they have presented or have published. So know your profession. Know what they require. And for me, an example of what I needed to do is I have my bachelor's was in business management with a focus in human resources, and then I got my MBA. I was in HR for years and years, and then business administration. What I discovered about eight years ago is that all the job, many of the jobs that were really the best jobs were requiring a certification in human resources management, a senior professional in human resources management. And that certification goes along with the professional organ organization as well. So I am a part of those organizations because of my career. So think of that and put that on your resume. And this can just be bulleted. Yes. What if, because like in my case, 
I am not even sure what's going to happen in my direction. So okay. when I think of the best organizations to be a part of, know that I kind of have the time and I'm getting bored, I'm trying to decide, do I, because sure, I'm not sure if I want to get it, but yeah, the Kiwanis yeah. Club, the Chamber of Commerce, they, which would be the best organizations that are broad enough that regardless of your industry or your career path, it would still look impressive. Okay, do you, and this is just so that it shows on your resume, right. we're not talking about the networking part. What would be great is to combine the two, and we're going to talk about networking in a few minutes mm. here. But um, a very, it needs to be something related to the job that you eventually mm -hmm. want. So Shannon, what, what, what industry <laughs> do you want to be in? Oh, Lord. Is, it, is, is it education? Part, partly. Okay. <laughs> Not completely. Okay. Then if you're talking about a, um, an organization that is broad like that, the Orlando business community has a number of different ones mm. where you can, you could be a part of the Citrus Club. That's a little more expensive. You could be part of, you could join, you could get the Orlando Business Journal, <coughs> journal and go to their <coughs> events. Because I have it, because I, I brought yes. it home for that reason. I'm say, like, I need to be making those kind of connections again. And then just pay to go to their events. Okay. I have met some of those amazing people. One of my favorite all-time professional organizations in the Orlando area is the Hispanic Chamber. And I cannot tell you how many non-Hispanics I have met mm. as a part of the Hispanic Chamber and the events that they put on. They are highly professional in what they do. Is that the same as Amigos Profesionales? No. Okay. I don't, no, I don't think so. Uh, I've never heard it phrased that way. Um, I haven't, but I'll, it could be the Spanish side of yeah. what they're saying. <laughs> but it, it, I have gotten business. It's a powerful organization. Mm -hmm. uh, chambers are always a good idea, yes. and there's often less money. Yes. West Orange Chamber, uh, Orange County Chamber, Osceola. So yes, that's what I would encourage you to do. Okay, and I know I'm looking at a time here now. I couldn't bore you with too much of this detail, but it's in here and it's on the it's on the uh, PowerPoint. And that is when you go to create this resume, I want you to remember these key parts to creating it. And that's I want you to start by we've given you some sample resumes. I didn't even come close to giving you all the samples I wanted to because we didn't want to inundate you. I, Kelly doesn't know I had five more I wanted to add tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. So I want you to get samples from friends, anybody you know, so that you can look at ones that fit you. I make mine in a certain way. I know somebody else who makes it in a different way. But this is who I am. And the key part is that it's visually clear that it's concise, that it has all the information, that my eye likes to look at it, it doesn't feel jumbled, and part of it has to do with the fact that you are going to bold and capitalize the headlines. You're going to separate, it's going to be single space when you're doing your professional, except for the bullet points, and then you're going to separate by double space between those different sections, and you're going to use bullets. Bullets are so much easier to read. Don't give me a ton of mm -hmm. verbiage. And you're going to see some of those resumes have done that. So keep in mind, those are not our favorite resumes. These are some samples, but they're in there to tell you. I want you to. I want you to search out more samples. Um, don't exaggerate. Don't. Don't exaggerate, please. You need to live historically with every resume you've ever written, don't exaggerate. And I know people who have been fired because they exaggerate. So don't, don't do that. And use keywords. I, I encourage you to go to Monster, to Career Builder, to Indeed.com, to any of these websites where there are jobs listed and read the job descriptions. Read them and use the key phrases. Don't just use it from your head. 
go and read it. That is honestly how I found out I needed to get my certification in human resources management. And I went back, and I promise you, it wasn't my favorite thing in the world to do. <laughs> it's a four-hour test, and there are only about 60% of the people that pass it. I was scared to death, but I knew I needed to do that. And so, so but I learned that by going to monster.com. I learned about my, the changes in my profession. Mm -hmm. Okay, use, don't use anything super, super colorful, just basic, off-white, one inch margin so that you've got plenty of room to put everything that you need in there not fancy fonts now keep in mind as i share this with you if you were all going into art i would totally eliminate this i would say make it the wildest most colorful most amazing resume because you're going after that kind of a job so think of it think of it that way who is going to be reading this and you, you all, that's why I didn't want to spend too much time in this piece. You all know that. You've all heard that a million times. But, but you may not have heard that this. And that is that I want you to have at least three people review your resume for grammatical errors and for um, spelling errors. I'm going, it went right out of my head. And I'll give you an example of the mistake I made. I presented my resume when I was younger to a vice president of a hospital. Do you know the first thing he said to me? And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, and you spelled hospital wrong. <laughs> I was like, that's not possible. I, I work in a hospital. I like at least for a promotion. So from that point on, I never read my... I always had at least three people review my resume. And I know it's a headache, it's hard work. Okay, the one thing I didn't bring to your attention was the whole LinkedIn. We're gonna move now into the future, but I want you to know on your resume at the top where you've got your email, I want your LinkedIn link, your address. Now, how many of you have a LinkedIn account? Perfect. I just want you to know, I'm going to confess to you, I don't even have a LinkedIn account. I just started it. And that is because I haven't really had to go out and find jobs using LinkedIn. But this is the information I want you to know. And this just came out about a year ago. And that is that 94%, 94 to 95% of the recruiters are going directly to LinkedIn. Some of them are bypassing your resumes completely, and they're going directly to LinkedIn. So this is number one for you guys. Resume, LinkedIn account. And the LinkedIn account is gonna need, this is where you want a really nice, go get a professional photo. Look your best, because you get to put it on the LinkedIn um, profile. Your recommendations, your ho this is where you're going to see hobbies. You'll notice in the resume I didn't have you put hobbies. And that's because I don't want you to use your space for the hobby part of it. And now it's not necessary because they're going to LinkedIn for that kind of information. There are, there are groups in LinkedIn as well, and those groups can connect you to people who may go, oh, I, oh you're out there looking for a job, you may be able to tell them. And keep in mind, obviously, if you're working in a current job, you're going to need to be careful with your private setting, privacy settings, etc. But this is key. And in there, you also will be able to put your accomplishments and maybe share your interests about which ones you want, where you want to go. So the groups might involve training individuals who are training directors in companies. Very, very important. So I would tell you in a week, go get a LinkedIn account, but some of you are in the middle of school, and if you're not looking for a job, you don't need to worry about it right now. Okay, so this is your future, is getting the interview, because you have to be seen. You have to go past all that verbiage, and they have to see you. So then, what's 
the other key. These are, these are the two key things I can tell you. Because link, let me, com, let me come back to, we'll get to this in a minute. LinkedIn is what they use to find qualified applicants. How do you think they use Facebook? So, to get rid of them. <laughs> that's exactly them. right, <laughs> Kathy. That is exactly. They, they go to LinkedIn, they look and see if you have the experience, then they go and check your Facebook, and they eliminate you. And they really, really do. And are there legal ramifications to this? Yes. But right now, this is exactly where it's going. So it's happening, and until there are lots of different lawsuits with people saying, you can't not consider me because of my Facebook, it's going to continue this way. So in your job market, that's, what, that's what's going to be needed. Okay, now, getting the interview. And this is network, network, network. I would have said it three times, but there, I didn't have enough room. I, I can tell you my own opinion, and that is that you will not get a job 20% of the time if you do not network. Because the individuals that network, 80% of the time they get a job. And they get a job that they like. And so how do you network? One of the things that I put in the that uh, Kelly added to your portfolio was just a more detailed list of how to network. The first time I ever heard the word network, I was like, I can't do that. That's too scary. I'm uncomfortable meeting, meeting people I don't know. I want you to, number one, tell yourself I'm not afraid of networking. Mm -hmm. Number two, networking is just going to an event or talking to a friend and just talking. You do not need to worry about the fact that, okay, I'm going to network, and this could all just fall apart. That's not, no, that's not what it's about. It's you connecting with somebody else who may have the same interest you have. Mm -hmm. They may not, but you've just talked with them, and they may know somebody who does. I promise you that every single one of those examples of networking, I have seen people get jobs for those just for doing that particular thing. So, talk to your friends, family, colleagues, volunteering. I know of somebody, my husband, right? I can tell you right now, my husband got a job because he volunteered for an organization. He changed his career, did not have the experience, offered to volunteer for 10 hours a week, was offered a job within, a, within a year, less than a year. Joining professional organizations, as I talked about, I, I am a part of a professional organization right now that's a training organization. It's called the Greater Orlando Organizational, I don't know all the details, it's called Good. And every one of those meetings, at the end of the meetings, they say, okay, will everyone stand up who's looking for a job? Tell us about yourself. Okay, will all the companies who are looking for someone stand up and tell us what you're looking for? I watched two mm -hmm. people, a company and an individual, get connected at that, at that meeting. So that, those are powerful. Employment agencies are huge from this perspective. They get you in front of the employer. So if, you're, if you've tried everything and you're frustrated and you still can't seem to get through the door, be willing to go to an agency and see if you can get in, get a temporary position working at the company that you want to. Be targeted when you do this part. If you want to work for Disney, then find out what the temporary jobs are at Disney. If you want to work for Orlando Health, look at those. And then school resources. And I use those because there are all kinds of career centers and, and there are professors, previous professors. Do you know that the job I have today as a performance consultant came through a referral from one of my professors here at PBA. He said, Elena, there's a job that I think you'd be great for. I want you to go apply for it. I've already talked to them about you. And I, of course, I had to go through the whole interview process and everybody else that was be applying for the position and there was competition. But that's why I have this job. I didn't even know the job was available. And so it's, and, and it's an incredible organization. Lots of wonderful things. So, 
network, network. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave you, leave you with is a summary, but I'm going to, that's not the very last thing, but here it is. Your resume is your historical calling card. Talk to others before you do it. Take time to do a good job. It's really frustrating to do resumes. People hate to do resumes. <laughs> and then create more than one. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn and networking. OK, this is the last thing. And that's this. I'll come to questions in a minute. This was the other article that was in the Orlando Business Journal. I'm just going to read it. It's very, very short. Networking critical to landing a job. This was just, this article came out just in January, January their, their edition January 13th through the 31st. Matt Durfee's job is to help others find work. The founder of the Orlando-based Navigator Institute specializes in helping job candidates put their best before a potential employer. Here are his tips on how job candidate, candidates stand out. I want you to know that before I even read this article, those are all the things I had already put in there. So he just affirmed it. Have a clear, concise summary on your resume. Summarize what type of job you're looking for and what skills you bring to the table. Recruiters have only a few seconds for each resume. He says only a few. Um, before going on to the next one, so you have to capture their attention. Think of it as a billboard on a highway. Second, have an impressive LinkedIn profile. This is the first place a recruiter will go when sufficiently impressed by a resume. Well, I've had recruiters say they go there first before they even look at resumes. Have a professional photo, solicit coworkers and colleagues to provide a recommendation or testimonial, and include items not on your resume, such as interests, accomplishments, hobbies, to show you're well-rounded. Networking is critical. Never quit networking. Those who don't network because they feel their job is secure are putting themselves at risk. They find themselves without a job. Reaching out to other people is a way to find out about job openings or get recommended for a job. So in this market, I wholeheartedly believe if you are extremely frustrated and, and can't seem to find the job you want, you will find it if you want. Mm -hmm. And use those different avenues I talked about. Are there any questions? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming, for taking the time to come. And please have any information. If any of you have further questions that you want to talk about, I'd be very happy to to engage in a conversation with you.